Our theme is political manifesto and civil society agenda for good governance. We focus on 2023 general election in Nigeria. Gentlemen of the press slash members of the fourth estate, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Now, on behalf of Abia State Chapter of Civil Society Action Coalition and Education for All, Sekefa, the foremost education focused civil society group in Nigeria, in collaboration with civil society group on good governance in Abia State, the organizers of today's event welcome you all. Nigeria is at a very critical stage in her life and history, especially now that she's at the dawn of a new political era. Her socioeconomic score had reached in all time low, so embarrassing considering its newly acquainted status as the poverty capital of the world, as well as the country with the highest population of out of school children, at 13.2 million at the last count by UNESCO. This, sadly, is against the backdrop of depilibating corruption, insecurity, abuse of power, and rights of citizens culminating in the shrinking civic and political spaces. Poverty is not letting up as 133 million persons, we have said, to be multidimensionally poor, according to National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. Baby burden of 77,000 trillion, according to Debt Management Office, BMO, weighs the economy down, coupled with perennial project deficits. Regrettably, those charged with the responsibility of getting the economy out of the woods appear to be uninterested or looking the other way while the economy remains in shambles. As we inch closer to the next general election, Hashi stares us all in the face. Unemployment, for example, stands at 33%. Inflation to 1.09%. Nara has dropped to over 460 at foreign exchange circles and over 700 at parallel markets all against the assumptions of the recently passed 2023 budget cast on wrong projections and uh, parameters. The questions, however, are how prepared are we as a nation to confront these challenges? Head on. What efforts and uh, institutional frameworks have been put in place to ensure we get it right? Are the institutions up in their games, motivated and prepared to do the needful, and if so, what role or roles are the CSOs and other critical stakeholders playing to mitigate the problems and create a new order? We are daily inundated with cases of violence from both the state and non-state actors, known and unknown, which now raise doubts over the possibility of the election, even though there are assurance that elections will go top line. There have been strings of targeted attacks on the electoral empire, its infrastructure, and the security establishment, with a litany of cases of violence involving non state actors and security agencies. According to Dr. D Abati of Arise News TV, as of December 2022, ANEC has suffered over 50 attacks in four years across 15 states. The frequency and even intensity of these attacks has increased considerably as elections draw nearer, causing palpable, palpable fear among citizens. The facilities of the electoral body, INEC, and security agencies have been targeted by terrorists and arsonists. These attacks point to one thing a determination to intimidate the Populace, the 2023 elect electoral process, even possibly to sustain the status quo. While the government has made numerous con commitments towards free and credible elections by putting a new electoral law in place and getting the right thing done in some instances, her role in all this remains 
then. It does appear that some swift five minutes are determined to truncate the electoral process, derail and deprive Nigerians of credible elections, going by the fact that after signing on the peace accord, many candidates are reporting to Mott Lingen, are shorting to Mott Oh, we're starting to mudslinging this information and its scenery to divert attention of the electoral electorate through non issues. There are report cases of uncollected permanent voters' cards, PVCs, and summary equipment belonging to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC itself, either destroyed or stolen across the country without record of arrest being made. The incendiary attacks on INEC office at the state states alone left over 65,000 PVCs destroyed, and nobody knows the chances of replacement. In Lagos states and others, including Abia, there are stories that INEC offices do not show up at world registration centers, or that they come late. Even the commission itself was humble enough to admit, through the recent release, that there have been discriminatory distribution of PVs in many cases, vowing to visit punitive measures and errant staff members provoking the anger of majority of citizens who suspect and attempt to disenfranchise them. There are many reasons the security agencies must stand up to their responsibility and get on top of the security situation. The Nigerian people have done their best by registering en masse during the last continuous voters registration, CVR, and are still doing more, raising the odds just to collect the permanent voters' cards, PVCs. In a, in a significant way, the narrative is fast, fast changing. Out of a total of 93.5 million registered voters, over 48 million of these are youth who simply want to take their destinies in their hands and decide who governed them and how they are governed. The 2023 elections further threatened by the inability of the people, especially these youths, who dominate the electoral register to get their PVC. There is a growing concern too that the electorates have yet to enter into real contracts with the political elite by getting the letter to present their manifestos and also sign social contracts deal on favorable time with the citizens. Sakefa and other CSOs on good governance, while applauding the recent expansion of the INEC timetable for the collection of PVC, still insist that INEC must also audit its own processes beyond merely making promises it cannot keep. The people have, have been told that the only way they can vote and their votes count is for them to have a voter's card. The PVC must be in the hands of Nigerian voters who wish to use them to exercise their due rights under the law. Not politicians harvesting PVC for senseless and ulterior motives. If we must get it right, political enlightenment, which is urgently needed, must begin with INEC officials and its ad hoc staff, CSOs, political parties, traditional and religious leaders. The security agencies are not left out in this. They are not doing their work in a manner that is consummate with extant law of the land. They have an obligation to protect the state and citizens from the manner of threat in a proactive and consistent manner. This is why they are in INEX Intergency Consultative Committee on Electoral Security, ICCEC, to ensure election security. The politicians also must be called to order. The beauty of the new Electoral Act 2022 is that it spells out in no uncertain terms the penalties and punitive measures to, for certain electoral malpractices in sections 92, subsection 7 and 8, section 93, subsection 2, section 94, subsection 2, section 95, subsection 6, section 96, subsection 3, and section 97, subsection 1. It's, it's about to conduct its year this year in all is about to conduct this year is all about the people's ability to choose their leaders right under a free, fair, and credible election. 
where national security operations is working. Having deployed over 100 billion naira on election technology, like by model voter accreditation system, BV, BVAs, and others, INEC must, must be steps ahead of criminal political agents who may be mobilizing agents against the process. It is the integrity of the right of citizens to vote and choose freely without inducement or any form of harassment, molestation, or encumbrances must be protected and defended. Having said all this, we are concerned that in Abia State, there are lingering issues of pension and gratitude, gratuity areas, non-payment of salaries, etc., which are part of attack on education, are evident. There is no report, recorded input from the political aspirants addressing the issues. Therefore, Sakifa and her group hereby state thus that there is need for political aspirants to show party concern via their manifesto and social contracts with the electorates. Presently, street corners are littered with billboards and posters, but there has been no serious engagement and debates to interrogate the candidates. As a group, we may vote to say that we shall be willing to engage all the aspirants in the course of time. There is, there is need to hear and interrogate the manifesto of these candidates. No. There is a political maxim which says that every society deserves the kind of leadership and government they have. Hence, we need an educated, politically enlightened, and mobilized citizen to demand good governance and dividends of democracy. That is what groups, this group stands for. Thank you all. This is signed by Mrs. Eunice Ibn and myself, the state coordinator and the staff, the general coordinator.